Welcome everyone to a new video. After focusing on carving sculptures for over a year, I think it is time to make my most epic one yet, and it's going to be a falcon. This crack will be a challenge, and hopefully I will find the best place for it to run through the sculpture. But firstly, let's redesign the falcon. My design decisions for the head came down to how the light is going to hit the sculpture. The waves around the eyes is something I will try to carve deeply into the wood to create strong shadows to guide attention towards the eyes. And I can already tell that the beak is probably going to be the main feature of the sculpture, much because it will be in the center of the log, which for black walnut has the most interesting color variation. I often square up the log I work with on my bandsaw, but for this project I wanted to utilize the full size of the log to make the hawk's head large. Using the bandsaw is without a doubt an advantage since I can cut the profile of the sculpture early on. This gives a lot of control, especially when it comes to proportions. I did plan to carve out the falcon's profile with my chainsaw, but less than a minute into the carving, yet again I failed to follow my original plans. And yet again this gave me a lot of problems further into the project, mainly since I had to use a lot more time to figure out the shapes. But anyway, I guess I have developed my own kind of chaotic approach and it seemed to work alright, but you can be the judge of that. So just like when I make my drawings, I try to focus on the larger picture first before I proceed to carve out the details. And the crack is making me a little nervous, but I hope it will end up becoming a feature and not a flaw. This is a predator, and I'm not sure if this is a rule without exceptions. But predators often have their eyes facing forward, so it is important for me to find the right angle of them. I was not that satisfied with how they ended up, so off camera I did a lot more work on them, mainly increasing the size and pushing them further into the skull, basically just looking at references, trying to get closer to a semi-realistic look. Right now into the project, I am a happy camper. I have found the basic form of the head and the details for me involves a lot less stress and comes down to more just having fun with the decisions and trying to find a cool and interesting flow to everything. And as always, welcome to all my new subscribers and thank you so much for the support. I look forward to share what I do with those who support me every time I go through with a project. It makes me humble, grateful and motivated. And out of those three feelings, humility might be the one that helps me perform at my best. So I actually have only one log left and it's a lot smaller than this one, but I still think it will be the one I will use for my next project. The plan is to make a rhino out of it and use some spotted birch for the horns, perhaps with some interesting inscriptions. I have also been in contact with someone overseas that can provide me with more material, but it does cost a lot to have it shipped to Norway. If I decide to go for it, I don't think it will be a decision I will regret. So fingers crossed later this year I can work with some truly epic wood for my sculptures. I added some water to the sculpture to have a closer look at the colors. Every log has such unique characteristics to them, and it's a big part of why I love to do wood carving in the first place. And well, perhaps you heard some ducks in the background. They have a room wall to wall with the workshop, so it is inevitable that they will steal the limelight of the video from time to time. With a head out of the way, I can start to think about the rest of the sculpture and how it will look. I want to have a lot of energy and movement in it, with large curved shapes tapering into a point at the end, so let's try to accomplish that. I think I am onto something with these shapes. It is fun to explore diversity in the designing process, so let's make two more before I make a final decision.
Tell me if I'm right when I claim that many watching this video probably wants me to go for the third design involving the wings. It probably would look pretty awesome, but I decided to go for a mix between design number 2 and 4. As a way to support my art journey, I make these wooden pendants and sell them in my online shop. If you check it out, I would really appreciate it. The link is in the description. Thank you so much, now back to the sculpture project. So when I entered the workshop again, full of motivation to put my awesome design into reality, I quickly realized that there was a problem. The log was way shorter than the design. And I immediately started regretting what I had done in the start of the project, removing a large portion of wood at the rear end. Oh well, things like this just happen, so I went ahead and started tapering down the end to see what I was working with. And just as a side note, I do like the concept I'm going for here, a lot, and I will probably use this idea for other sculptures as well, like a wolf's head or something. So up until now, I have been putting a lot of pressure on myself, which has kind of made the process less enjoyable than what it usually is. So from now I'm gonna, you know, loosen up my shoulders, uh, freehand the rest of the sculpture and have more fun. Because uh, in my experience that really gives the best result and it gives me a lot more energy and motivation, which is really what matters to me. So uh, let's do that and accept however it ends up looking. Every word I just said is very true to me, and perhaps creating a sculpture for myself is where my focus needs to be at to achieve the best result. So this just happened, and it was expected. There's a lot of cracks in the area where the beak is, and I saved the small portion that fell off. The colors of the point of the beak might be the best color of the entire sculpture, so using a different piece of wood for a repair would be a terrible idea. Making the deep groove which the arrow shows right now might be the decision I'm most satisfied with through the entire process. It somehow breaks up the bullet shape of the sculpture and gives it a more dynamic appearance. The sculpture is looking large and grand the way I wanted it to. Now it's time for some hand sanding. Whew. So that's 20 hours of hand sanding and uh, now the colors are really starting to show. And this side is definitely the most spectacular one. So next up now is to reattach the small part of the beak and finish uh, carving it. When I looked closer at the beak's piece that fell off, I noticed that the wood pattern was creating circles through it. This made it very important to attach it at the exact same place as where it broke off. I made a bit of a mess with the epoxy, but since it is not a highly detailed area, there will not be any problems just sanding away the excess. You can start to see the circular pattern I mentioned earlier, and I almost feel like someone looking for precious gems when I discover areas like this. I do feel the pressure when I work on important areas, but I'm very happy with how the beak ended up looking. I do not know if what I'm about to do is really necessary, but I decided to secure a large crack with some bow tie inlays. The risk of having the crack expand was simply too large, and it would ruin the appearance of the sculpture, viewed from the front. I wanted to use discarded wood from earlier in the project for the bow ties, and well, I just discovered a positive side effect of not keeping my workshop clean. I found two pieces with some really nice colors in them. I'm honestly not as good as I could be to take care of all the small bits and pieces I cut off, and I guess they could all be cut down to size and glued together into a large block for an entire new sculpture.
So not too bad, but the front one ended up having a little bit too much wiggle room. In my defense, my chisels are really dull, but it's also my responsibility to keep them sharp, so my defense is kind of worthless. Time to start thinking about finishing the bottom part of the sculpture. I will leave it fairly clean so that it does not steal away too much interest from the main part of the sculpture, which hopefully people will think is the features of the head. One of the things I like about working with walnut is the weight of the wood. I love how solid it makes the sculpture feel when I lift it up with my arms. I have not counted the hours used on the project up until now, but I think I'm close to about 70. The carving of the sculpture is finished, just some smooth sanding left and it's ready for the oil. Now it is time to start thinking about the base. I will keep it simple and make it very similar to the other bases I have made. I did buy a walnut slab for $300 for this purpose, but I decided that a pitch black base would look better instead and give the sculpture more attention. My plan is to use that slab for future sculptures instead. So here's how the sculpture and the base is looking together. The question now is, do I make the base shorter? And I have been looking at some pictures of what you are seeing right now. And I think the best thing is to have the sculpture stay outside of the base on each side a little bit, just to put more focus on the sculpture itself. The next question is how high up I'm going to have the sculpture stay at. And I think this is kind of a nice height to separate it from the base. So let's time skip and make the base shorter. So here's how the new size is looking. Uh, maybe I went a little bit too short, but uh, I think it's all right. It's not looking wrong, at least. So now it's time for a challenging part, which is to make the pins completely straight from the sculpture to the base. So this solution did work quite well, but for the next time I will make a square block of wood with a perfectly centered hole I can guide the drill bit through and clamp it onto the area where I want to drill the hole in the base. You might notice a problem here, and that is that the sculpture is moving around a bit as I am drilling the holes. It's not a disaster, but I think it did mess up the angles of the holes a little bit. Finally, the sculpture has been attached to the base, and the pins came out a little bit like this. But I think it's looking alright, I shouldn't be too hard on myself. And these are just placeholders. I ordered some really nice brass pins for the final result. So now, dear friends, it is finally time for a moment I have been waiting for, oiling the sculpture. Thank you so much to my patrons for your support. Over on my Patreon page, I post about my personal life like trips outdoors, investments, sketches, future plans, and so on. If you want to check it out, the link is in the description, and you can also join as a free member. For my next video, I plan to make some wall art sculptures, which will be ready to be sold in my shop when the video is released, and I'm very excited about that. Thank you all for watching, I look forward to see you in my next video. Now it is time to reveal the final result of this video's project. <laughs>